quite considerably. So thank you guys so much for coming. And I'm so sorry I didn't get out a notification sooner. I meant to get this out over a week ago, but there's life, you know, so. Um, but thank you for coming today. I will not take much of your time. This doesn't take long, but it is really important because I know a lot of people have not been introduced to NCBI. They don't know what it is. Um, and I know that can be a little scary using a new application. I will say it. Some people are going to like it and some people are going to hate it. So I think we all just jump in the boat and swim up, go upstream without our paddles. Um, I'll try to make this easy and quick. So hopefully I don't take up too much of your time. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. The first thing that I want to show you. Um, and I'll drop this in the chat. The first thing I want to show you is just that we do have standing instructions for this process. Um, so I'm going to, oh, thank you, Jenny, for dropping that in the chat. So Jenny, just drop that in the chat. These are standing instructions. I would bookmark these if you do know that you're going to be on DOE or NSF proposals now or in the future. Um, right now, those are the two sponsors that require them. That could change. I know they're talking about everyone trying to move towards this application. Um, so again, just bookmark this. If you ever lose them, though, let um, me or Laura or Jenny or any one of us admins know and we can get you the link to these again. Um, honestly, I think the hardest part about this entire process is just getting logged in to the thing. <laughs> so um, you'll go to this site. Um, and then you'll click on the National Science Foundation icon. I'm not going to walk you through all this. It's pretty self-explanatory. You'll need to enter your credentials for um, your research.gov credentials. Um, if you don't know those, let us know. Whoever requested this of you, let us know. Um, we can try to help you out in that department. You may have to create an entire new uh, username and password, but we tried to migrate a lot of those over when we went to research.gov. Um, so just let us know if you're having a hard time getting logged in. However, once you are logged in, Jason, I hope you don't mind, I'm going to use your um, profile as an example, just because it's a clean, good example to use. Um, once you're in, this is the screen that you are going to come to. So you're gonna see your, um, a bit of a dashboard and it's going to have your various documents so it keeps your documents each time we do a new one for you the old one will still be there and your new one will be there it's beneficial for us to do this because there's um i'll show you there's a couple of fields that we really want to hang on to um so while it makes your dashboard look a little messy i promise it's saving time in the long run <laughs> The documents that you're looking for are either the most recent for the current and pending or your labeled CV. Because if you have multiple proposals going in at the same time, you can see Jason has two CVs. This proposal is different, so he probably wanted some different products on that CV as opposed to this proposal that's going in for DOE. Um, so look for that proposal number that you're trying to verify and certify, um, and then look for your current and pending, look for the most recent one, um, because those those aren't going to change based on proposal number unless, um, unless we need to annotate this proposal. That's a caveat. I'm not going to explain that. But um, so you're looking for the proposal number, right? So Jason just went in and certified this CV, but when you go into your document, there's a couple of things you'll be able to do within it. Um, you can edit your identifying information. Typically that stuff is gonna be up to date, but if you see if you had like um, just gotten promoted or your position title has changed, that would be the one field that usually needs to be updated the most. Then you, you have your sections of your CV. So this can, be what you, I mean, this is your CV. So whatever you want to have represented, you do get control of that. Um, we try to prepare as much as possible. So a lot of stuff will already be in here um, when you come to your CV. But 
uh, we it, it is your CV. So you do get to dictate what comes in here. Karen, go ahead. This is a really small aside, but the information that's in your identity up above is actually drawn from the very first entry in your professional um, experience. The very first line, the most recent line, is the one we check the box that says use this as our identifying information. So if you're going to change it, change it down below in that first entry. Does that make sense? So in here? No, um, the appointments and preparation. It's actually drawn from the space. Oh, 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 here, down here. I got mm -hmm. you. Right, right, right. Right. So in there, there's a little toggle at the top that says, use this as my identifying information. And that's where it pulls from. Jason, go ahead. Does the month that's assigned to um, to some of those dates matter? I mean, because I those Mays were put in there by someone other than me. So I figured it just defaults to that if you don't specify a month. I put those in there because it insists on having it and most people graduate in May. I don't know why it needs it, but it won't let you get past the field unless you stick a, um, a month in there. So that was a wild guess on my part. I could, I'm happy to change them. Okay, so you so you think it probably should be corrected. It's 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 a little bit more than just a randomly chosen thing. It actually does have some meaning, right? It's, I don't know how they're they're using the information. I have no idea. Okay, it's a field that is required, and you can't move past it unless you stick something in there. Okay, thanks. Sure. That that being said, though, that's a great segue here. So thank you for asking that, Jason. These edit pencils, this is for you all, right? So when you come in and you're verifying your information, you can go in to each entry, verify anything and change anything. This again, this is your CV. So if you see like, oh, that's not quite right, you can absolutely change it and then just click save. Um, and, and it will update as such. And you can do that for all, all your entries for both the CV and the current and pending um, on all the sections. So anywhere there's an edit pencil, you absolutely can go change any information you need to change or, or clarify or um, make more accurate, whatever the objective is for you. Um, again, we try to get most of the stuff in here ahead of time, but there are times you do need to go make some edits to it. Go ahead, Laura. I just want to say real quick, just make sure that you hit the edit pencil and not the delete, because once <laughs> you delete something, you can't undo that. It has to be re-entered. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. I say that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> um. And that's a good point, too. You could go add your own entries in if you need to. Again, we try to make this as easy as possible. So we try to have everything in there that you need. Um, but if you need to add stuff, you can. You can click on that. Sorry if you didn't see that. This add. And this is in every section. And it's also in the current and pending. You can add whatever you need to add. Um, us, us admin are trying to make this. So you just kind of come in, verify. There's a couple of fields on the current and pending that we can't fill in for you, so you'll have to do that. But um, And then your products down here, you can edit these with this um, link here. You can edit your products. I'm not going to touch these because I know these are a little finicky, and Jason really is like in the middle of like <laughs> certifying right now, so I don't want to mess this up. But um, other significant products, and then the synergistic activities. Um, you can delete them, you can edit them, you know, do what you need to do with them, move them up or down because they're numbered. Anyway, so you're verifying all of that information, change anything you need to change. And then you can go to the sort of this certification section, it says download PDF, it's not going to let me do this because I'm not Jason. But it's a very quick, like you download the PDF and then a, um, an agreement box will come up that says this is the most accurate information I can provide at this time, something to that effect. And you click agree um, and then it will download. Once you get that downloaded certified copy, that is what you would send back to whoever requested you go in and do this. Um, so for in this case, I've, 
ask Jason to go do these steps. Once he has that downloaded, then he sends that to me and I'll get that into the proposal folder. So that's what it means when we say you need to go certify. It, it literally means you just go check all that information, make sure it's right, and then hit the download button and click agree. It's not a, it's not a lengthy process. Um, it doesn't take too much time. But again, I know this is kind of a foreign application to a lot of you. Um, so then we'll go into the um, current and pending. And there's just a few notes that I want to tell you about that. Um, I'm, don't watch my screen for a second because I'm acting as a delegate. I have a little bit different steps to get back to that. <laughs> so just don't watch. <laughs> don't look away. Look away. You're, you'll be able to easily get back to your dashboard um, as the PI, but because I'm acting as a delegate, I need to go the roundabout way. So I'm back at the dashboard, what you would see, and I'm going to go into his current and pending. So when I asked Jason to verify this stuff this morning, what he is looking at, again, you have that identifying information. This one is not tied to an entry. Um, so this one uh, really is just its own separate field. So if he were to need to edit any of that, he could. Um, and then the currents and the pendings, right? So everything is annotated within the entries. So when we're adding these entries for you, this is what we're doing. We're filling out these fields. Um, we put in the title of blah, 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 right? We put in all this stuff. And then that's how it's populating here. So he can see all of his currents. And then it rolls right into pendings. Um, and he could go verify that information and change anything that needs to be changed. Now, the one thing about the current and pending that you will always have to do, so you really will have to use all of these pencils every time, is this right here. This statement of potential overlap is any overlap with the proposal going in. So every different proposal will require that field to be updated um, for any overlap with the um, proposal going in. And when they say overlap, this is what they're talking about. There's this little like icon, you can pull up what that means, but it's not awesome. It's not a great definition. Um, so I will add this, I meant to add that earlier. I'll add this down here in your pro tips down here on the instruction sheet. But when it says potential overlap, they're saying, is there any overlap in the statement of work? And is there any overlap with the budget and the POP? And what that means is basically, can you do X amount of hours of work and it falls in both POPs and you only have to charge one budget, but it applies to both projects. That's what it's really asking. It doesn't ask it in the best way but that's what it's saying is basically, can you double dip on this project? Can you take one set of work and apply it to both of these projects because it's within the POP and it's um, it's able to be covered by one project, but it applies to both? And is there any overlap in the statement of work? Um, and uh, as you can see here, if there's none, you can just type in none. Um, and the one entry that will be filled in for you is the proposal that this is for. So when it says this proposal here, that is already gonna be filled in for you because it's in A, right? There's no overlap with the proposal going in because it is that proposal. Um, so that's something you're gonna have to check every time. You're gonna have to go through all your little pencils and make sure that your statement of potential overlap is accurate for that proposal going in. Um, again, if you need to change any of the information on any of these, like you know something got extended and you need to put a new end date, you could do that too. Um, those are all valid things. And the other thing that um, you're looking for, oh, I should have stayed on that. The other thing that you're looking for is your um, current FY person months and just making sure that you're not over 12.0 person months for that current FY. So I did put that on your pro tips here, that adding up the current FY person months to make sure you aren't exceeding 12.0. What I cannot put on paper, this is important, what I cannot put on paper is that 
if you have over 12 person months in the current FY, you look over allocated. And the best answer I can give you is you probably shouldn't be putting in that proposal. The other answer that I can't put on paper is that you can adjust your time as you need, right? Because sometimes we have projects that are ending. So maybe the person months that are in there for the current FY are for the entire FY, but really you only have three months left on it. So you can reduce your time to reflect just what's remaining. That's totally fine for you to do. Um, the base funding, we already have a sentence in the base funding. So Jason, I'm so glad I used you to be a base funding. So here is Jason's base funding. We already put this sentence in here that in the event that an unanticipated overlap and effort does occur, the level of effort will be adjusted from the base, right? Because that's not a set amount of time that you have to spend on your base funding. You get a set amount of dollars. Um, so that is a super kosher way where you can adjust your time there. So if Jason was over, he could bring this down to 0.3 maybe to get him under that 12 months. But just know that if you have 12 months on your current impending um, that is really frowned upon for the sponsor that's reviewing your proposal because you're over allocated. How are you going to fit their project in? Okay. And then the same thing with the um, certification process. You're just going to download that agreement box will click come up for you. Click agree, send the downloaded doc to whoever requested that from you, and then they'll get that in the proposal folder. So I hope that was quick, down, and dirty. Does anybody have? Any questions? I know that was a little fast. I do just want to make a comment real quick about um, just going back to that base funding. So you'll notice on the base funding that there, there's the, the project title. Um, there's specific, you know, specifically where there's NCARD research focus area, the, um, you know, and then the title of the base funding within that uh, potential overlap. Again, there's that specific wording in there. All of this has come from budget and planning. So if you're if you're looking over your your current impending and you see that something has been filled in in potential overlap, chances are it's your base funding. Um, but make sure to check that. You know, make sure that that um, check every entry for your potential overlap. But we fill out we fill out as much as we possibly can. Um, and that kind of that goes the same for what will happen is um, next time Jason has a current and pending that's uh, for NSF or DOE, we can actually go in and we can say copy. We as admins can go in and say copy this current and pending so that all of those, um, the descriptions, the dates, the everything will be copied over. Again, you'll have to update the potential overlap, but that's you know, it, it kind of saves time that way and that we, we can copy a current pending. Um, so making sure that it's accurate. And then the other thing that I do want to note real quick is um, it's so important to review these and make sure that they are correct because every time there is an edit and that edit can be literally a lowercase l to a capital L that's considered an edit and you'll have to go in and recertify your current pending. So really look these over and I know it's time consuming. I know it's a pain. Um, up at the top of the screen, um, actually at the top and the bottom, but if you can scroll up next to where it says download PDF, there's view draft and that will give you a PDF um, of your current pending. So you'll have everything in front of you if it's easier to look at it that way, um, rather than each pencil. Again, you still have to edit the potential overlap, but it at least gives you that that kind of bird's eye view of your current pending, so. Which actually is a great answer for you too, Matias. I saw that you asked how do you, what's the easiest way to see all of your person ones to add them up? That would be the easiest way to view it is to download that draft um because it just you know comes out in one document um go ahead jeremy hi a couple questions real quick um well one i just certified a cmp yesterday that that definitely added up to more than 12 
12 person months, but I didn't realize I shouldn't, that I should have said something. Um, <clears throat> two, for example, I noticed because you were using Jason's as an example, there's base funding for Fast Eddie in there. And I noticed that the total award amount uh, is different than the exact same entry listed on my CNP. So, so I guess I'm wondering, is there any attempt to establish a consistency between shared projects between people on these CNPs? Like, for example, in the description column, you know, the PI of a given project ought to issue a description of their project. And then everybody who's on that project could put that same entry in there. I think that has started to happen, but it seems to me like there are so many things that are just not, uh, they're not very coordinated. It seems like, and, and, and we could probably save admins time, PIs time and worker bees time in, in recertifying things if we could establish some sort of systematic approach to ensuring consistency of the information in these. Yeah, so I definitely hear you, Jeremy, because that's one of our frustrations too, is that um, that it just depends on like when we pull the current bit, because these come from a report, right? So some of you have seen that report as well. It comes out in an Excel workbook and um, all of your projects are separated by tab, current, pending, um, in progress, whatever. Um, so when we, like Jason didn't have a current and pending in NCBI prior to that. So he got that report and he populated that report and then we put that information in here. Um, whereas some people already have a current and pending and so we can copy the information over and we do try really hard to make sure that um, they are consistent throughout the different people that we're preparing for. Um, the base funding is really difficult to get um, penned down because the way that it's our accounting system is the biggest problem, but we have to pull reports from every year to add all the funding that you've received since the beginning of that base funding project because not every base funding project starts at the beginning of the co-op which is you know october of 2018 some projects have started later than that um so getting the amount for each year and then adding those up that's where that comes from right now we're in this really tricky spot where you might know um what FY24's base funding amount is going to be, but since our base funding hasn't been loaded yet, <laughs> we wouldn't know that. So you may have known that and may have been able to change that on yours. I, doing Jason's, I only have access to what's in the system and that's what I knew from that. Um, we also have so many current and pendings happening at the same time that it's hard to see like, oh, this person was named over here on this proposal. So we did a current and pending forum last week. And now Jason is on that same project that was on that person's current and pending. Those um, cross lab connections are really hard for us to make. So we try to do our best and we do love that we can copy over old current and pendings to keep those like objectives uniform um, for the different projects. But I, I hear you that is one of our frustrations too and definitely something that we talk about continually as a team as to how to coordinate these efforts better um so i don't have a good answer for you but that is we we do talk about this often <laughs> as to how to make this as easy as possible on everybody this is by far one of the most difficult documents for us to put together i would say i, I mean i might be speaking for myself but <laughs> I think within our admin team, this is one of our biggest headaches. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I really appreciate the perspective and, and, I, and I can sympathize because I can only imagine that that as much as I feel like, I mean, because I've done, I've certified the same CNP like three times in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine that that the the load and burden on the admins is like 10 times what, what mine is. So so fully sympathize. And I, and I really would hope that we can think about this as, as really of a high priority to start getting more streamlined and more efficient. Um, one other thing I might suggest is 
I have always found the notion that a panda entry must be started upon saying hello to a potential external collaborator. And as soon as that happens, okay, you start a panda entry and you have to list potential internal people. And then what happens is potential internal people are automatically used to populate a CNP. So for example, on Jason's proposal right here, I was at one time a named entity on the proposal. So it created work for the admins to seek my CNP and to seek my CV. And then it turned out that I really shouldn't be named on it. And that all started from way back at the very beginning of sort of prematurely um, establishing a certain set of information as like the basis of, of the automated system. And so I just wonder if we could also think about reviewing uh, some of these some of these systems and the way they interact with one another across the board just just trying to voice some suggestions for for potential future yeah and i i really appreciate that and susan you're on this call i don't know if you can speak to that a little bit better because you are on that side of when panda panda entries are created um and how people are named on them and then some people end up coming off of those or people get added. Um, so I know you have some input around that. Maybe not. I mean, it could be, it could be that it's, it's, it's for a discussion for later, of course, sure. but just something to bear in mind, because it does seem like we have so many different systems of automation trying to work together here that sometimes they get in the way of each other. And, and it would make sense to me that, that we stop, take a step back and, and, and try to assess and make things more efficient than just blindly running through the motions because as usual, we all feel so busy that we don't have any time to question what we're doing or how we're doing it. We just do it. Um, but that's just my, okay, I'm off my soapbox. Sorry. <laughs> no, these are all super valid points. Um, I think it might help you also. I think so the lab knows how this is coordinated, but it's funny that you say that, Jeremy. Actually, the, the problem is, is that this is not automated. Um, that a lot of this is manual effort. Um, so I just want to show you this just so you guys have an idea of how this is done. What happens is when you put in a, uh, in a panda entry, sorry, so when you initiate a proposal, um, it gets assigned on this assignment sheet, um, and it just depends on what the sponsor is. So this is what our um, sponsors are down here, zero dollar, whether it's NIH, NOAA, NSF. And the reason we have to silo those is because the formatting for all the sponsors is different. Um, the only ones that use the NCBI portal right now are NSF and DOE. But if we were to be doing NOAA proposals, those look completely different as far as the current and pendings and CVs go. But um, so what happens is uh, Panda entries created, you, you get assigned your PA, and the PA, the proposal administrator, is the one that throws out the request to the admin group. Um, I'm working on this proposal. I need um, CVs and CMPs, or I need CVs, CMPs, COAs for these proposal for this proposal. So Leisha adds this to the assignment sheet, and whoever's named on it at the time um, gets named. And then we do understand that people get removed, so we try to annotate that. Like Faye was removed from this. Sinlin was removed from this, so we no longer needed those documents. Um, but the problem comes in is because proposals are such high priority, this is like our biggest priority within the admin group. We're trying to get these documents out as fast as possible. So as soon as we get assigned these, we're like, oh, you know, we kind of drop everything, prioritize it. These need to go out right away. Um, Jason, please don't judge me on that because I know I had yours out late, so I apologize. But um, Typically, we're trying to get these out right away. There's also instances like this where proposals get withdrawn. So as you can see, I started that CMP and then I found out, I think a week later, that it, that it wasn't going to move forward. So that happens too. Um, but this is how they get assigned, right? And then they get dispersed as evenly as possible. Um, and we try to keep it to, but I mean, look at all these proposals. And this is just NOAA that we were assigned. So there's just proposal upon proposal, CMP upon CMP. And then we have like that same 
sort of list for each, right? So, so this is what it looks like on our end and how we're picking up the work. And, and I think it's important that, you know, we do prioritize proposals above almost everything. So. And something, something to keep in mind, and Tina made a good comment. I know we're over the, the half hour mark here. Um, but as Tina said, this is why it's so hard when last minute changes are made to total budgets or titles on proposals, because every single person on that, we have to go in and we have to edit and change the title or the budget. And that's, and that's fine. We can do that. But that's why it's so important. We wait, especially with the NCBI, we wait to ask you to certify your current and pending until hopefully, fingers crossed, we have all the correct information in there. So that's why we may send you that spreadsheet or the, I'm sorry, the workbook with the currents and the pendings and say, hey, can you update this? You know, we, we need the potential overlap, et cetera. And we get all that in. And then it may be a couple of days later. It may be a week later until we ask you actually to go in and certify your current pending. And that's why is we're waiting on that proposal to be finalized, everything to be finalized. So you're not going in certifying it. And then a week later, we're saying, hey, by the way, can you go certify that again? Because, you know, something changed in it or whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of our our process with those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what Tina said in the chat. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely like I said, this is one of our biggest pain points. So we um, we know it's frustrating for you. It's frustrating for us. I think it's just a matter of getting those um, Panda entries as solidified as possible, as early as possible. But Tina, go ahead. I'm sure you have some input. Yeah, I was just going to tag on to that, that. I just don't think a lot of PIs realize. They think, okay, um, we've got two days before I have to have it submitted. I need to change the budget real quick. And they think it's only going to affect their proposal. But say you have five people and those five people are in five other proposals. So now you're affecting five proposals, 10 proposals. So every entry on their current pending has to be updated. So that's why when Susan has these really strict um, deadlines, that's another reason why. So we're not just being a pain, I swear. <laughs> Yeah. And then, yeah, so what Matthias is saying, that's why we have the timelines. And we try to be as accommodating as possible. We know that, you know, things do change and we get that and we try to try to um, accommodate those. But yeah, this is not it's not a fun process for any of us involved. That's why I said we're all taking our boat up the creek and none of us have paddles. <laughs> um, but we try to do this as best as possible. And absolutely, we're always open to feedback. I mean, I know I, I don't want to speak for the entire admin group, but I'm about to. Really, we're always open to feedback and suggestions as to how to make this smoother, better. Because, um, I, I mean, current and pendings are definitely, they're only amping up now, right? Because now we have to do these for reports, too. So our requirements have just gotten stricter. <laughs> But I'm sorry we went a little bit over on that. But if anybody has any questions, oh, CVs, Jenny, go ahead. Sorry, I just added it into the chat. I just with the CVs and Karen, you can interject if you don't agree. But I think probably if you have any anything that you see that needs updating on the publications, just let Karen or I know. Making an edit for those is a little bit more tricky, and it goes into the bibliography, and then you. When we go back into the NCBI to do the CV, we can just click on it. And if it's not accurate the first time, then it might be incorrect going forward and in the future. So it might just be easier to let us know. And um, just one more thing. I know we just beat this horse to death, but one more thing about that um, comment you made, Jeremy, about having to go recertify your own CMP. It possibly could also be because somebody else changed something on one of their proposals and it affected your CMP, right? So that could be happening um, simultaneously. Okay, does anybody else have any other questions or saved rounds as we would say in the military? <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I really, really appreciate it. I know this wasn't the best way to spend your 
lunch hour, but but this is important stuff. Well, Matias, thank you.